Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel. Um, this is potentially being, looking at the clock, looking at my wristwatch, half past ten. Um, months, or even a year or more since I last played a game for you guys. Um, and I decided to pick it up again, and part of the reason is because of this game. I played a little bit of it, um, I've beaten some of the beginning, I know the, um, mechanics, I know some of the character stuff, but I didn't get very far. This game is hard, <laughs> quite hard, and certain mistakes that you make and certain choices that you make at the beginning of the game really do have an influence on later in the game. So I'll show you, and I'll move my way through this. Um, I'll be creating a character, going through those steps, this will be kind of like an episode zero, I guess, and basically I'll show you the creator character creating and then afterwards we'll see how it goes um, I have a theme in mind I have a character in mind already but I don't know how effective this is gonna be this game's the type of game where if your character is not not necessarily perfectly optimized but optimized enough you can and will get stuck in places so with all that aside let's start a new game um, I'm going to be doing normal difficulty. Uh, hard difficulty might be way too hard, <laughs> which is fairly obvious. Dominating difficulty, I was looking at it a little bit earlier. All of those, all of those uh, extra difficulty things, player's health, all of that, all that I need, all that you need to know, and all that you need to kind of uh, be aware of, and why I'm not picking this game, is that last little sentence there of, we do not guarantee that this game can be completed in this mode, so choose at your own peril. Yeah, um, I'm going to be choosing normal. For experience, there's two different types of experience in this game, oddity and classic. Classic is your classic RPG, the more things you kill, the more, or the more XP you get. And oddity, which is what I will be playing at, you find little... Uh, artifacts or little clues or what they call oddities that give you XP and leveling up as well as quests. But I'll be going normal and oddity. Um, in terms of character image, you can upload your own character image. Uh, I mean, this is one thing that doesn't matter so much. Um, but I do have. I mean, look, look at that. Look at that. Um, but I do have some kind of generic image already picked out. The stats here, oh, one sec, enter the name. Uh, I'll call him Sleepy. He'll be Sleepy. The stats, very, very important. If you don't pick your stats correctly, you kind of cripple yourself. The build that I'm going to be doing is very dependent on stats. Strengths, not important. I'm not going to be hitting anything. I'm not going to be using weapons. Dexterity, not super important, but there is one skill that will use it that we will need to keep it like that. And same with agility. Constitution, somewhat important as well. Um, it's guaranteed your health, so I won't lower it down too much. Or at all. Perception, this is where iffy starts to come out. Hidden traps, hidden objects, and passages can be very important to pick out. On the other hand, the main bonus to perception, which is ranged weapons, is something that this character will not be using. So, do I boost perception? Do I not boost perception? I'm gonna drop it, which might be a gigantic mistake, and we will see if it's a gigantic, gigantic mistake, because there's landmines, there's traps. This character might instantly hit a trap and explode. Will. So what this character and what this character's concept is going to be is a psyker. Um, so I'm going to be boosting will and be boosting intelligence. And since I've got this extra one point, um, you know, I will boost. Agility is another one that is going to be very somewhat important, especially as you can see there that side here, the, uh, oh, I guess I can't see it, but increasing the stealth performance. Increasing the stealth performance is potentially something that we will need. Um, while we're not going to necessarily be focused on stealth, we will definitely use it. Um, so, you know what, I'll use that extra little point there. I'll accept that. Skills. 
here is where you can see uh, stuff starts to branch out quite a bit. Offensive, this is where um, strength or dexterity, see that strength or dexterity, we're not going to have a lot to be able to put in those. Our offensive weapon based capabilities are going to be severely lacking. Um, we are going to be completely dependent on our psych abilities, which because I have not played a psychic or character before, could become hor completely horrible. So, in oddity mode, there are three very important things. Or, sorry, two very important things. Hacking and lockpicking. Because you level dependent on stuff you find, and a lot of that time, a lot of the time, those things are hidden or locked away in boxes, Getting both hacking and lockpicking to what you can get to, to, the max you can get them to, is very important. Um, this number here is kind of our actual skill. Because our intelligence is so high, we get a little bit bonus to hacking. Same with lockpicking. Uh, because our dexterity is 4, we don't get a negative, but we don't get a bonus. Um, which can suck. We'll have to put a lot into lockpicking to get it up to snuff, but it shouldn't be too bad. The other one stealth as well. I'm going to bump this up to stealth as much as possible. Um, these two, persuasion and intimidation, also very important for this character. And since they're based off of will, we will have a fairly high persuasion and intimidation check. Now, we are using the Underrail Expedition DLC. So there's a couple different additions to that. So there's a couple different guns and melee uh, weapons that are very that are new to this DLC but there's also temporal ma manipulation we are going to be boosting temporal ma manipulation and we are going to be boosting thought control and then we only have one skill left and see this is where potentially having dodge would be very good potentially having evasion would be very good stealth hacking or any of the technology um, normally I like to boost the same stats each time so you can spread them around you can do 15 here 10 10 put 10 into evasion but when you level up you have a limited pool of uh, I guess XP points to put into things if you don't use sorry if you balancing it kind of wackily you will start to very quickly see your character being crippled. That might be the case here. I might be going into the outset of this completely crippled, which it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, chemistry, biology, uh, chemistry, biology, tailoring. These are all uh, crafting skills. And while crafting is very important for certain builds, very important for certain builds, like if you're building guns or our character does not and will probably not be doing much crafting, which allows me to entirely skip this bit. Um, mechatronics good for guns, electronics, shields. If I can buy this stuff, I'm going to be buying it. Um, and most of it can be bought or found. There is some stuff that probably could be better if I made it myself, but for the time being, and for this first little character, we'll see if there's anything that um, anything that I can't buy, and then we can always go back and try to something else. But for the time being, no crafting abilities, which could be a gigantic mistake. For the last one, I'm thinking it either metathermics, which is rapid temperature changes, so fire or ice, or psychokinesis. And I think psychokinesis might be better in this case. Um, psychokinesis uh, would allow me to do things like creating shields, creating punching, punching through stuff, moving stuff around. And I believe this is the one that we'll be mostly, use, mostly using for our defensive abilities, which probably is what we're going to need to boost. Metathermics, if I had a stat that I could drop, like if I could... If I didn't have hacking, if I didn't have lockpicking, if I had a stat like that, I would do that as well. But in terms of this basic psyker, thought control, psychokinesis, and temporal manipulation. Here is <laughs> here we go for the uh, 
the feats here. These feats are all kind of important. Um, they definitely do increase uh, your... Sick. Yeah, so they, they definitely do increase your survivability and what you can do. These also increase with, increase with level and increase with um, your stats. So there's certain things that I'm going to be looking to grab. Corporal projection, probably not. Uh, doctor, maybe. Fast metabolism, gun knife, all these gun ones, no. Heavy punchers, hit and run, juggernauts, marksmen. Those ones I'm not. Psychosis, yes. And where's... Okay, see, some of these feats are locked because I don't have Psy abilities yet which is a little bit of a problem because there's a few here that I would like to grab at the beginning. As you can see, psionic mania, stuff like that that I would like to grab, neuro, neuro, neural overclocking that I would like to grab, but I can't because for the time being, I'm not actually psychic. The character starts in the game not psychic, so can't pick any of these psychic ones. Locus of control, stuff like that. So I have to pick things that potentially would still be helpful while at the same time not necessarily psychic related. So one of them is snooping. Because I'm so bad at <laughs> at perception, because I made myself bad at perception, snooping at least gives me a chance to find hidden passages and other secrets that I otherwise clearly would not. In fact, I might... Hmm. <laughs> I might drop... Okay, so my stealth, 16. This is not going to have much of an impact, but this might. Depending on how, I'm, and I'm not sure the math behind this, but depending on how hidden things are calculated and the skills that determine to calculate, the difference between a 6 and a 7 might be very, very important. So I'll go for forest snooping. That's also probably won't hurt when detecting traps. The next one. is paranoia. Paranoia is another one that's detection based because my per uh, perception is not very not very good but will detect kind of hidden enemies and hidden enemies in this game can be very very dangerous so I will be also be picking paranoia. So this is the character sleepy all of these stats will and intelligence at 10 he's very smart very will willful willful man um, he's a psychic or latently psychic and he's paranoid he's paranoid and he likes to snoop what a wonderful person this is what a wonderful person sleepy is well let's see the world of under rail under rail and see if uh, he'll fit in at all all right last topic of course earthquake repairs I'm going to be for this one, for this role-playing thing, and this could be potentially, not role-playing, this RPG, potentially uh, good, bad, iffy, not so iffy. I'm going to be trying to read these characters in at least somewhat voices uh, that I would assign to them. This will change. I'm not a professional voice actor by any means, but I think it gives a little bit more flavor to just the text that you guys just will otherwise just read. And I will be skipping some stuff. I will be skipping some of the store dialogues that stuff but the main kind of story bits i won't be so to continue my oh so wonderful voice reading all right last topic of course earthquake repairs what's the situation at the south tunnel gotta dig deeper to plant the explosives we're risking more damage to the tunnel says gorski who uh if you don't know and if you're unaware from the picture he's a badass but apparently he talks like Mickey Mouse, which is a little strange. Almost everyone is working shifts up there. Shouldn't be too long now. Gorski, how's the security looking? Got one man at the cave exit, and that's enough as far as I'm concerned. Automated security is strong there, and as long as we know the crossroad and the cove are clear, no one can sneak up to us. Also got one man in the underpassages, and he's been ordered not to open the gate no matter what. The last thing we right now are those bloody lurkers sneaking up on us. Those things are the things that I need paranoia for, because they... Ooh. <laughs> as soon as you kind of experience them in-game, you'll know why I'm so worried about them. 
Everyone else is up at the platform securing workers and tunnels. Good, good. No one else has anything to add. Anything else to add? That will conclude this council meeting. Actually, just one more thing. In case you weren't informed already, I admit a new citizen to the station. That sleepy fella? Yeah, he's a little sleepy. Yes, I think he'll be a good addition to the station. He and Venzo, Venzo, so it's a strange name, says Hadrian Tanner, the boss of this place, <laughs> are still at the range, but they should be done at any moment now, I believe. You, too, but you put too much trust in your tests, Tanner. All I care about is how he handles live action, not how many points he got. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Let's put him to work immediately. We all need we need all hands on deck right now. Indeed. That's a that is all Vera Gorski. Bum ba ba And that's us. They mentioned us. Oh we've already making a huge impact. An unexpected yawn interrupts Vencel. He instinctively raises his left hand to cover his mouth, forgetting that he's wearing a respirator. A tiny smile creeps up on your face it is due to this very fact. Yet, you understand, after so many hours of testing, these kinds of lapses tend to sneak up on people. He soon continues. Ex excuse me. All in all, Sleepy, as far as I'm concerned, we're done here. I've got a few other things to do, but unless you'd like to have another go at the testing range, you have no reason to stay here any longer. So, this would be the tutorial. And potentially... The tutorial, and if you guys pick up this game, the tutorial is very helpful. It explains certain things in the game that are very important. Like how to move, how to do all of that, how to do all of that, how to attack, how to sneak, all of that. I don't think I can beat the tutorial. I My character is not built for combat, and the first thing that opens up the combat, sorry, the first thing that the tutorial opens up with is a combat explanation. And I can't use a knife. I can't use a gun. My character can't use anything. So if there was an attempted combat encounter at the beginning of the tutorial, this would be quite bad. So instead, I'm going to go skip the tutorial. But first, how do I can compare to the other newcomers, Fencel? I can't tell you that, Sleepy. Come on, man. It'll stay between you and me. Excuse me. Well, if you really want to know, your score was way below average. Hmm. I'm going to play Sleepy. There's a little bit of a nice kind of person who's not meant for the tunnels. Uh, very nice, very gullible, very cheerful, very polite person. But a little bit gullible. So he's going to fall for this of what? Only below average? But how? I was only joking. He scored highly on most of our tests. As soon as we're done here, I'll be sending them to Tanner. I think he'll be pleased. Continue. So are we done here at Roar? And once I click this button, this will be the last uh, portion of this episode. I'll start the next episode with the actual game, the actual choices that we'll make. This, again, episode one. Hope you've enjoyed, not episode one, episode zero. Hope you've enjoyed the first little look at Underrail.